this extraordinary car is the connecting link to the very famous aeronautical engineer Giorgio Stirano, who made a huge career within the automotive industry, and not only in the automotive industry, but also in Formula One. After the accident in which Ayrton Senna lost his life during a race in 1994, Stirano was appointed by Williams as expert surveyor on the side of the Williams team, which was being accused of causing the accident due to them having created an undersized steering column. But why is this Michelotti Pura the connecting link? Because this highly unique carbon fiber car is owned by Tony Calò, who invited me to participate in the famous cannibal rally called 12 in 12. What he did not tell me then is that I had to interview people, something I had never done before. But as a person who likes challenges, I had a huge opportunity to speak first in Italian with Leonardo Frigerio and afterwards to speak with the renowned Giorgio Stirano, who was so friendly to speak English with me. Hi, my name is Cor, and welcome to my channel, Driving with Gloves. I always drive with car gloves. Your question might be, why do I drive with gloves? And my answer is, why not? This is Giorgio. Giorgio, please to meet you. Uh, shall we do the interview in, in English or in Italian? We can yes. speak English if yes, you want to English. try to speak English. Okay, before I try to speak Italian, so this time I am left that I can speak English. That's We're more international. We are international. <laughs> Giorgio, can you please tell me who you are? Well, I, I can say that I'm a friend of Tony because yeah. he, he found me uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, because he discovered I was a designer of the mechanical component of the Michelotti Pura. Okay. It is a prototype that is owned since many, many years. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen, I've seen the you car. You've seen the car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, perhaps one, um, Tony Calò is the organizer of the 12 and 12 race uh, for, for those people who didn't understand that. Ah, okay. And so he invited me tonight to, to be part of this crowd of people. It was a very interesting event. And um, so I start to, to deal with him uh, when he start to inter interrogate me and interview me about uh, the reason why we designed the car in that, way, in that way, this uh, kind of engineering. And explain him that at uh, uh, that time was the early 90s. Mm -hmm. We have been uh, in relation with Michelotti, mm -hmm. and we decided to present uh, the car to the Torino in Geneva Motor Show. Mm -hmm. um, with Michelotti developing the styling mm -hmm. and the body, and developing the, the component related to the, to the chassis, to the suspension, mm -hmm. and the installation of the car. So it was a. I mean, a a cooperation. A cooperation within the two companies uh, mm -hmm. to promote the, the brand of Michelotti and the brand of my company that was called Alba Engineering. Okay, Alba Engineering. And, and so it was a very interesting uh, <laughs> job because the car was uh, a small car, mm -hmm. but uh, we can say, and he is English, so he, he, he gave me this. Uh, this paragon that I didn't realize at that time. It was early than Lotus Elise. Okay, so we can. The car was like a Lotus Elise, very small, very slow, very nice. Because the stylist of the car with Edgardo Michelotti was Tate Uchida, that is a Japanese. Okay. So the Japanese have the, fa the culture and the capability yeah. to conceive a small car uh -huh. due to the Japan, uh, yeah. you know, environment. So, so as always, as Colin Ch Chapman said. Um, more power makes you faster in straight lines. Subtracting weight ma makes you faster everywhere. Huh? <laughs> exactly. And that's uh, that's it's the way. narrow and, uh, and the reactive. Yeah. But you have also um, a background in Formula One. Yeah, because um, 
because uh, I start um, many many years ago unfortunately 44 now mm -hmm. uh, at the Zella team that was small racing car team based in Torino okay this team uh, it was my school because I got my degree engineering aeronautical uh, engineering degrees in Torino University mm -hmm. and then I immediately start to work with Ozella in racing car okay and then I'm very very lucky because since 1976 uh, up to 80 we were in Formula One. Okay. So it was, of course, a small team uh -huh. with a Ford Cosworl engine. Yeah. And uh, we debuted in the early 80 with Eddie Cheever as well. Uh, okay. Then uh, he, um, I worked uh, with Ozella since uh, the following year, 81. Then uh, I'm a very free person, so I decided to work by myself. Okay. And so after five years of experience with Enzo, I started to go ahead in motor racing. And then I designed cars for Le Mans. Okay. For Facetti Finotto, there was a very. Are you, are you not staying in the hotel? Yeah. I can say. You were the, uh, the other one. Private drivers, but close to the works yeah. team. Okay. And then I designed cars for Le Mans. Mm -hmm. We won the championship, uh, the small it's car championship, who was the Group C junior in 83 and 84. Okay. In 84, I start again to work in Formula I, 1. I like I and so I go day by day, oh, step by step, uh -huh. <laughs> to be involved uh, in motor Have racing. You. And starting in 86, my company became racing and the company to manufacture <laughs> prototypes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the Pura was one yeah, of the examples. We worked for Giugiaro, uh -huh. with Giugiaro, with Pininfarina, with Bertone, with the idea that it was another company of Torino. Yeah, yeah. So, so, my, so they did the styling and you did all the, the yes, technical Yes, I was the expert yeah. of the mechanical uh -huh. component, like the chassis, mm -hmm. like no suspensions, no and vehicle dynamics. So I was working, assembling the car the with the stylist and the in? manufacturers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I, I was in charge to develop the you know the vehicle dynamics of the cars. Mm -hmm. um, and what I've heard, you also work together with uh, Ayrton Zena or I've done that not with him. Well. I've been a consultant I knew very well from William's team at that time. And Patrick Ed in particular he was a technical director. And when we had the accident in Imola, mm -hmm. I've been uh, engaged as a technical expert for the you know we have a long process uh, of uh, in the tribunal mm -hmm. because they, we had investigation oh, the 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 exactly mm -hmm. and so I work for Williams as a responsible of the expert okay. team because the, you know the trial has been developed in Italy so I was Italian so there I, I deal with uh, all the experts that we, we, First, it, it was necessary to have Italian people mm -hmm. because when you go into tribunal and you, you cannot have translation, yeah, yeah, translation became uh, yeah. very complex because, because it's too detailed, too technical. Um, yeah, when you are going to explain, uh, I remember Charlie White, who was a Formula One uh, responsible, has been inter in interviewed by the judge, mm -hmm. and the, the first question was by the translator. What's about the skeleton of the Williams? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so just no, the wording is a common, the chassis or the tub or whatever, yeah. but not. It, and then, so I worked for, for this, uh, this uh, process for uh, seven years because it was a very long uh, development. Mm -hmm. And then, of course. Uh, and, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, no, no. Uh, may I ask you what uh, what what projects you are now at the moment on? Uh, do, do you still? Uh... At the moment, I closed my company that uh, in 1999. I moved to Monte Carlo. Now I live in Monte Carlo as individual consultant. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am in a lucky situation that sometimes somebody phoned me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember how we are able to design cars. Yeah. Because today is an interesting situation. Uh, we, we are living in a, in a period, a historical period, where you have the software mm -hmm. that is a very strong tool. Yeah. The software gives you a, a, a power in terms of design, in terms yeah. of simulation. Because, because you don't have to build in everything. Right? Exactly, you, you can, can simulate can or the shape, or the mm -hmm. image, or the fun function, also the vehicle dynamics, mm -hmm. because you can see and now we are a simulator, yeah. but you must drive the software. Yeah, no, and I'm still in a situation 
due to the 40 years of you know, walking experience. Uh, and that helps hugely. Yeah. So sometimes we, I am able to mix uh, this experience with the uh, with the software and by the other end I, bec I became a specialist of uh, new vehicle architecture so it means uh, electric vehicles in general okay. Okay. this kind of vehicle require something very innovative mm -hmm. so despite my age <laughs> um, I, I am able to give my contribution in terms of uh, you know reliability of the solution yes but it, 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 I think with electric mobility it's not a problem because if you see John B. Goodenough this professor who, um, who developed the, the ion lithium battery in 1977 I heard that he won the Nobel Prize at the age of 97 in 2019 and he's still developing a new kind of uh, solid state battery with Professor Braga in, in, in Portugal. Now today the technology has yeah. an amount of, uh, of, uh, of roads that is very important. Yeah. Uh, I have been very lucky because motor racing, motor racing mm -hmm. give you a very important reaction ability mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. in motor racing you must react quickly. Yeah, yeah there are no, give, not long processes. Yeah, okay. You have to do it. No, it's not possible. Yeah. You must react quickly yeah. with working function. Yeah. On the other hand, I work with the stylists like Giugiaro, like mm -hmm. Farina that are genius. Yeah. And so I learn by them because you, you, the creativity is something um, that, that you that, have. That's, that's the emotion. But yeah. sometimes you can work with the creativity. Mm -hmm. So you can deal with that. Uh -huh. And so I try to mix this reactivity with some capability to be innovative mm -hmm. and to understand it. Because I always used to have, I work a lot with the English people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, my slogan coming from motor is to be practical. Mm -hmm. If you are practical, it works. Yeah, okay. okay. This is my. My that, 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 that you follow the function actually yeah no i follow normally i follow the the first stage of the project so i mean mm -hmm. how you can deploy the vehicle architecture where we install the electric motor mm -hmm. how we manage about the passengers uh, how, which kind of vehicle we can uh, mm -hmm. going to conceive i give you an example today uh, an electric motor is very small yeah. it's a cylinder like this mm -hmm. and of course you have a number of components and you have the batteries to install somewhere mm -hmm. but this kind of you know layout can afford you to have more people in the car yeah. because the usual car is the nose as the, the, the engine the gearbox mm -hmm. the, the volume is much bigger than the electric mm -hmm. motor and, and what do you think um, for an electric car um, the weight is less important because you have this uh, re recuperation energy huh? um, but the, ele oh, the electric vehicles must be is a philosophy mm -hmm. first of all because you, normally you have a thermal car, thermal engine car outside park, it's okay, we start now and we can perform 600 kilometers yeah. with electric car now. Mm -hmm. So we must start with to conceive a different concept and also a different kind of vehicles. Mm -hmm. Because there is a, a, a number of functions today that, you, uh, that are very specific. Transportation, the last mile delivery, mm -hmm. the downtown delivery that are normally London is an example. Of, mm -hmm. you know, impossible to go downtown mm -hmm. and so they have a limitation of the traffic yeah. so this kind of vehicle requires a specific, a specific architecture mm -hmm. and you define the function with the, the architect mm -hmm. Sorry that I sometimes look, but I, I no, no, still no. want you want it's to have okay. your focus there. And I don't if I don't. No, no, it's okay. Yeah? Okay. It's okay. So we are working on that because yeah. there is a, uh, as another point is today we have the technology is available. In the past, when we were starting with a project, uh, you need a building like this castle with all the function of the project: yeah. computers, uh, laboratory. Today, you have everything in a computer. Yeah. So the, a lot of parts of the design of the car are resident inside the laptop. Mm -hmm. So all this availability gives you a possibility to, to 
start to matter. Immediately, a lot of response, a lot of answer about the question of the brief of product. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a power in terms of design that is increasing today, every day much more. Mm -hmm. And do you think that uh, that uh, electric car will um, push away the combustion engine car in the future? Not, not so briefly, not so briefly. Okay. Because the combustion car are still having a, a, an integration of performance that give you more freedom. Mm -hmm. as, I said, as I said before, the electric motor, the electric car or electric motors give you a more specific function. Mm -hmm. So I think there will be a different range of functional mm -hmm. activities. And, and what do you think about um, H2 engines? H2 engine, the problem is the delivery, the delivery of the, the energy as the electric vehicles, the same mm -hmm. problem, okay. because the winning technology will be the one able to have a functional delivery system. Mm -hmm. Why the petrol cars are so easy to use? Because you find a fuel station 10 miles away, 5 miles away from here. Now we are still in a problem of which the car, our electric vehicle, or the H2 vehicle, have a problem with delivery of the energy. So who resolve this problem? Hey, the electric vehicle are now working on, you know, the, the, the swap the engine, the swapping the battery, building the battery somewhere. Yeah. The H2 is still. Although with the Porsche Taycan, it's possible to, to have a supercharger within 20, 25 minutes. Eh? To now we are reducing the time. Also, yeah. also Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. We have a fast charge Tesla in half an hour. Yeah. I am commissar of the Automobile Club of Monaco, and we organize the rally of electric vehicles. In the last, in the last years, the Tesla is winning because they are recharging. The people are recharging in half an hour. Yeah, yeah. In the rally of 700 kilometers. And then they were very smart that they made their own net. Huh? That the, the, the exactly, because they are the I have a friend, the Italian friend is moving to Torino to Maranello sometime. Mm -hmm. There is a, a good chance in the middle of you know the travel there is some smart charge yeah. system. So you can start from Torino, you stop in Piacenza 20 minutes, maybe to eat a sandwich or yeah. something like that, or half an hour, and then you reach Maranello. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely easy to so we have a lot of opportunity. <laughs> I, I want to thank you very much for this You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> spontaneous interview, sorry. Um, yeah, thank you very much, George. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching a special episode from Driving with Gloves. Please like this video and please subscribe to Driving with Gloves on YouTube.